soldiers carried between 40 and 60 pounds a year. This is a war soldier, I should say, not just war soldier. Now I'm dressed and equipped as the average soldier in the Civil War would have been. My hat, jacket, pants, socks are all 100% wolf. Yes, I'm hot. I'm a sweaty mess right now. <laughs> Just being honest. Uh, my jacket is called a sack coat. This is the fatigue blouse of the Union Army. Almost all Union soldiers were issued this type of jacket. It's very simple. Just four brass buttons to close it. Very simple, very cheap to make. It needed to be simple and cheap because the Union government was producing literally millions of them. Uh, I've got chevrons on. These light blue lines, they indicate my rank. Three chevrons indicates that I am a sergeant. You can also tell by the color of the chevrons what branch of service I'm in. So light blue means infantry. Infantry are the guys that carry the muskets and they walk everywhere they go. If they were yellow, it would indicate that I was in the cavalry, the guys on horses. If they were red, it would indicate that I was in the artillery, the guys that fire the cannons. So I am in the infantry, sergeant in the infantry. My hat is called a forage cap. To forage means to scour the countryside looking for supplies, particularly food. But when I find that food, I can put it in my hat. My hat doubles as a bag. Almost all Union soldiers were issued this type of headgear. Almost all of them hated it. It's not a very good hat for living outside for three years straight. Think about it. It really only protects my eyes from the sun. What soldiers much preferred were called slouch hats, which look more like a cowboy hat, a broad-brimmed hat, which protects my whole head from the sun and from the elements. My shoes are called brogans. Part of the program where I show you how flexible it is. <laughs> it's just a real simple leather shoe. It's actually state-of-the-art footwear technology. In the decade before the Civil War, something that revolutionized footwear was invented. Anybody know what that was? No, not sold. Not at least a good guess, though. It'd be the invention of the right and the left shoe. <laughs> yeah, before the 1840s, almost all shoes going back throughout human history were straight shoes, meaning they could be worn on either foot, right or left. It didn't matter. My shoes are made for right and left feet, so they are much more comfortable for the wearer. You might notice whenever I walk around, I make a lot of noise. Very, very hard bread. Now, it's too hard for you to just bite into. You break your teeth. 
So, what they had to do is crumble it up and suck on it until it became chewable. They could soak it in water, soak it in coffee. And my personal favorite is to fry it in bacon grease, because it tastes like bacon. <laughs> Nevertheless, almost all Union soldiers were issued hardtack, at least 10 3-inch squares of hardtack per day, as well as a meat ration like bacon or salt pork, salt beef, what soldiers nicknamed salt horse, so it probably wasn't of great quality. But nevertheless, I would keep my food, I would carry it in this haversack. It's just a simple canvas bag that's been tarred or coated with a substance to make it water resistant. Got my tin drinking cup affixed to it. Underneath is my canteen. It's made out of tin. This particular type is called a bullseye canteen. That's shaped like a bullseye. On my back, I'd place the cap on the weapon, 
and I'm ready to go. Now I'd be standing in a battle line, all right? Maybe 200 men on either side of me, two ranks deep, shoulder to shoulder. The officer would give the command, ready, aim, fire. <laughs> on the command to fire, I squeeze the trigger, the hammer comes down hard on the cap. The cap makes a spark. The spark travels down a tiny channel inside the weapon, ignites the black powder, and fires the musket. And then I start all over. That was for one shot. Now take a guess, how many shots do you think I could get off in a minute? The manual says a good soldier can fire three aimed shots in a minute. <coughs> the manual is wrong. A good soldier can fire his first three shots in a minute. That's not real hard to do if you practice. Uh, but as each successive bullet is fired, powder residue begins to build up inside the barrel. So each, the next bullet becomes harder and harder to ram down. In the middle of a pitched firefight, I'm going through 40 or 60 rounds, I may be getting off about one round a minute. So hopefully, so is the other guy. Now, the enemy's coming up close. Your officer might give the command to fix bayonets. Pretty intimidating, right? 18 inches of cold steel. The next command is to charge bayonets. All the soldiers bring their musket down with the bayonet pointed towards the enemy. The reason that command is given, officers don't want guys standing around poking the guy next to him, poking the guy behind him. <coughs> All bayonets with the business end pointed down range. The next command would be charge, and you would go forward. Now a textbook bayonet charge isn't like what you see a lot of times in the movies, okay, where everybody just takes off running as fast as they can. Remember, I'm in a battle line. 200 men on either side of me, two ranks deep, shoulder to shoulder. As we move forward, we've got to maintain our straight line. If everybody just takes off running as fast as they can, our line breaks up, officers lose control of the men, we as a unit lose command and cohesion, and in military terms, we lose hitting power. It's a phrase meaning we want to hit the enemy as hard as we can at the exact right spot at the exact right time. We can't do that if all of our guys are spaced out. So a textbook bayonet charge is more like a fast-paced walk or a light jog, something like that. Now bayonets were used in virtually every battle during the Civil War, but they resulted in less than 1% of all battlefield casualties. Less than 1%. The reason for that is pretty simple. If you saw 500 guys coming at you screaming and yelling with fixed bayonets, you might be inclined to go the other direction, right? Yeah, that's the point. It's an intimidation tool. The point of a bayonet attack is to break the enemy's formation before you actually make contact. Now, does anybody have any questions about my uniform?